I'm sorry. I'm keeping you from starting the show. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> and, and the, no, I think, the un- I think it is keeping Amos from starting the show. Ah, shit your asshole. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 94 for Wednesday, the 7th of September, 2016. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff, whatever else comes to mind. And sometimes we get really awesome guests on this motherfucker, like this woman sitting in between us right now, Miss Jackie Hearn. How are you? Hey, how are you doing? It's been a while. Hi, Jackie. It's been a while, yeah. Yeah. Well, last time um, you were on the show, you made you made Kent look like shit by, by co-hosting and outshining him. I mean, I'm not saying oh, I'm not saying it's hard. She, the, <laughs> that's when she performed the coup and just basically took over Ritual Misery. It was her show. Though. Didn't it? Di- okay, I I don't quite remember that, but I will. I, I'm guessing that um, that show probably lasted two and a half hours. Uh, oh, at least yeah, yeah, it was a long show. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. That's um, so, yeah. uh, Jackie, you've had a hell of a week. How has uh, how, how how would you sum up your week in a uh, in a in a in a forty three sentence uh, paragraph? <laughs> I'm I'm trying to work within your constraints. <laughs> how about two words? Okay, okay. Category one. <laughs> Fair yeah. Enough. So what what was it? What was it called? Her Hermine. Hermine, I think, yeah. Yeah. I try not to get to know its name. I always try not to get to know it very well. She doesn't want a personal relationship with the storm. <laughs> no, no. But I happen to be in the one city that actually got real bad damage. Uh, was hit, hit as a hurricane after it passed through here or the, through where I was. Um, it uh, it it downgraded to a tropical storm, and um, that city. Uh, well, it's Tallahassee. I'll just go ahead and say that I was working. I I work there a lot for Florida and the capitals there. Um, And uh, the, the, the storm, it was like the first major storm that that city had had in 30 years, Mm -hmm. which is um, remarkable for the state of Florida because, you know, um, the the last major hurricane to go through Florida was uh, about 10 years ago, but there have been a lot of them. So anyways, Boring story, but yeah, it was pretty bad. Uh, I was out, I was without power the entire time, and I had uh, rented a pod to ship off stuff to California. So I had to pack up and move without air conditioning, without ice, without um, batteries, without, you know, pretty much anything other than charging my cell phone in the car. Um, And there was no gasoline. So, awesome. but luckily I char- I when I realized that the the storm was going to hit that night, I made sure um, the car that I had been using was completely full of gas, so I could charge my phone as much as possible. <laughs> she didn't care about leaving. She wanted to make sure she could turn the car on to charge her phone. <laughs> well, I mean, that was it. That was my only source of like, you know, is there a tornado coming this way? Exactly. Is there, that's, you know, that's, that's hugely important. These that's days. awesome. Yeah. Can't so, you still live in Florida? How many how many big storms did you get hit with? In Florida, oh my God, um, it, I would say at least a couple a year. What years were you there? And I'll name them for you. Oh, geez. Okay, I was there <laughs> from '96 to '99. Yep. Oh, okay. So I was on the Gulf Coast. You were on the Gulf Coast. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's I, a little was where here. Cabo is now. So you didn't get hit by Andrew, because that was '92, and that was yeah. Like- that was Miami. so yeah, that was a couple a good story about before. Andrew real quick. Um, the trailer park that I used to live in with my first wife, uh, half the trailers in that park had still had damage from Andrew. Like the owners just said, fuck it. And they just didn't bother repairing it. <laughs> so yeah. you know, uh, we lived, we lived on the nice side of the trailer park. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we, yeah. we, we were in a single wide duplex. Like that's, that's the kind of lifestyle we were living. Well, I mean, that that's actually one of the major things the things about uh, um, major hurricanes and earthquakes is that the the uh, recovery stage only takes a couple months maybe a year but um, or the, I mean or, or or the the but the no the actual recovery stage the actual from the moment 
to, to, to fix everything that's actually gone wrong with your infrastructure could actually take up to 10, 20 years for some of these major hurricanes. Right. Uh, Hurricane Katrina is still, we'll, we'll never be able to restore things back to the way it was. Um, there's uh, information about property records, um, jail records. There are pe people who were in prison that we don't fully know what they were charged for. Oh uh, originally, um, all of that stuff wow. is damaged and completely lost. So, like, the recovery of these things can last for decades, um, you know. So, anyways, whatever. I'm going to really bore the shit out of people if I keep talking about it. <laughs> I'm, 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 it's kind of my shop mode tur coming, turning on, and i got to turn that off and turn my Jackie Hearn on. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, I went to uh, – I, I, uh, my, my, my twins are – in high school, and we went to their high school football game this weekend. Oh, I gotta yeah. say, man, that was that is so much fun. I I love high school football. I for whatever reason, like watching high school football, there's a different energy to it. And then it gets to college, and I'm just completely bored with it. And then it goes to the NFL, and I can watch it all day. And I don't know why that is. I, I well, I mean, the high high school football is personal. It's not like I'm going to random schools. It's my kids' school, you know. So it's a little bit different. But Kent, you'll you'll be happy to know, we went there to meet up with all of our neighbors, and uh, you know where they sat? Right next to uh, the band. Right next to the band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was, just, it was just like being back in high school. I where I sat like in the middle of the band. <laughs> Are you yeah. in band? No, no, no. I was uh, Kent was in band. He played trumpet. My girlfriend was in band. She played the piccolo and the flute, and I sat in between them. <laughs> so like every game that's where i was so me sitting next to the band in a high school football game just it just felt comfortable it was like ah here we are right it's like going home awesome <laughs> it was good times how about uh -oh. you kent what, what'd your uh what'd your week entail oh god okay all right for, so let me get i debated if i was gonna bring this up i'm gonna fuck it i'm gonna bring it up uh so <laughs> The nation has been, uh, well, okay, let's say the media has been putting uh, out for the last couple of years, I guess, a lot about police shootings. Mm. Uh, or, uh, it's a cop killing a suspect or a uh, assailant killing a cop. Um, and unfortunately, here in my little town, we had both occur in one incident last Friday. Uh, there was a uh, there was a couple cops that were uh, they were driving down the road and they spotted a wanted felon, someone that had some warrants. So they approached him and he took off running. So they did a foot pur pursuit, and somewhere uh, during the foot pursuit, the suspect pulled out a gun and started firing and. <gasps> Yeah, so unfortunately, uh, one police officer and the suspect uh, both were killed in the incident. Uh, oh. so that itself is pretty terrible, of course. Um, but it's really heart-wrenching for me to watch this little town deal with it. Um, especially when you've got... A small town like this, other than the military community, pretty much everyone in this town knows everyone else. Mm. And so there are people that, uh, you know, th that I know that went to school with both of the individuals mm. uh, because they're local. You know, they grew up here. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. So uh, on one hand, I'm really proud of this town for really coming out and you know, supporting the families and things like that. But on the other hand, there's been a lot of, uh, like, hate thrown both directions. Because, um, you know, you got two shattered families, you know, trying to cope and mourn and everything else. Every time and I hear about one of these things, it's, it reminds me that, you know, there's three sides to every story. You know, yeah, and, and, and each family is going to listen to their side of the story, but really the truth lies somewhere in between that nobody wants to acknowledge. Exactly, yeah, and that's what's that's what's really sad. I mean, other than the deaths themselves, that's what's really sad to me is is to just kind of watch this unfold and just watching the community deal with it. It's it's really it's on one hand it's it's incredibly interesting to watch it, 
but on the other hand, it's just, I don't know, all sorts of emotions uh, yeah. with it. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I hope everyone gets closure and everyone can, can find a way to move on, um, fairly quickly from the whole thing. Well, um, with with such a heavy uh, heavy event going on, I'm sure you found a way to relax and uh, enjoy some time with the family, at least, right? I absolutely did. So on Saturday, uh, I had one of my coworkers come over, and we did a little barbecue, and decided to have a board game night. Hmm. Have you guys ever played? I bet the answer is no for both of you. Have either of you ever played Firefly, the board game? Or it's called Firefly the Game. It's the, the board game for the show Firefly. No, but that sounds like a shit ton of fun. I have played oh. the role-playing game, but not the board game. Yeah, oh, you have played the role-playing game? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, oh wow. cool. we'll have to talk about that sometime. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea that you that you played that. Yeah. Uh, no, but the board game, it, it puts you right in the middle of the show, basically. So you're a captain, like, you know, just like, like, um, Mal, like Malcolm Reynolds, you are a firefly captain and you have to basically just fly around the verse doing jobs, trying to get paid and trying to survive and try to not get arrested, try to stay away from the Reavers, things like that. It's a ton of fun, but oh my God, the setup and trying to relearn the rules itself takes like an hour <laughs> because it's such a a complicated board game but once you get going man oh man it is fun i highly recommend that game. If, you, if you're a board game person and by a board game person i don't mean sorry and monopoly i mean like a like serious board game person right. i highly recommend this game awesome lots oh, of fun man. uh how about you jackie what'd you do this week that uh that struck up the the little the little nerd in you um, I realized how much I love technology because I had no electricity. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, um, no, I seriously thought I was going to die. Um, I, I, I was, I was, yeah, I was, uh, uh I don't know, making terrible suicide, uh, jokes, which was really inappropriate. Um, but I don't want to die, but it was, it was really bad. I don't know how people could survive without electricity. For more than a day. I mean, it was really <laughs> hell. I remember shouting out loud when nobody could hear me. It's only three o'clock p.m. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the sun to go down. Mm, yeah. Um, but uh, anyways, but oh. in the meantime, as I said to you guys before, that I was charging my phone a lot. And um, I binged in the last week or two a podcast that I just fell so in love with. I've been, for some reasons I won't go into, I've been checking out all of the <laughs> feral audio podcasts. And I happened across uh, my favorite murder podcast. Um, it, the main reason is one of the uh, co-hosts is a former um, co cast member of Mr. Show with Bob and David, of course, Karen Kilgariff. Um, but uh, it's Karen Kilgariff and uh, Georgia Hardstark, and they t they just, it's these two women have sit down and have a conversation about murders. And it's really funny because they've kind of made the connection the show. The show is now hugely popular. Um, it's been high up on uh, iTunes, um, you know, comedy. It was, a, it was a number one comedy for a while. I think it's like number 11 right now in general podcasts. But uh, they, they've kind of made this connection that apparently women really like murder shows. And I used to back in the day. I used to nag my boyfriend by watching like forensic files and stuff like that. And yeah. then I started working in a job where I had to photocopy uh, death row, um, not death row records, not, not the rap group music, <laughs> but uh, actual right. death, death row records. And um, she, she's I, photocopying I had to see Snoop Dogg. <laughs> I'm sorry, what'd you say? She's photocopying Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Right. <laughs> now, Snoop, if you um, could, if you could just put your ass right here on the Z rock so I can hit the button. There you go. Thanks. One, Thanks. two, two to the three. I'm going to press this button. Uh, never mind. I can't. I still can't. <laughs> this button of coffee. <laughs> um, but uh, anyways, so um, but I, but now listening to their show, I kind of like now I'm interested in murder again. And I think it's really fucked up. 
And um, but I know what it is and what it is, particularly for women, is that when you listen to this kind of stuff, what you want, what you're doing is you're you're listening to the, the terrible shit that happens to people. And you think, now, if this were me, how would I get out of it? Um, you know, what would I do differently? Um, so anyways, but it's a, it's a lovely podcast and I can't get enough of it. And I binged the whole thing so just, and I had nothing else going just on. Just so we're clear, I, I, if I'm going to generalize on, on a, on a sexist level. Yes, go ahead. Men, That's what I just did. Men, women are, are, are like, well, how would I get out of it? Blah, blah, blah. Men are like, how would I not get caught? How would I get away with it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, like apparently we're... women are like that too, according to this podcast. But yeah, uh, no, I, I uh, that, that, that's a good connection there. So, yeah. um, so I spent the I spent a good part of the weekend installing Linux uh, on a computer, the Whisper. That computer. sounds like murder. Um, it, you know, it, it was actually made so much easier. Last time I messed with Linux was like oh four oh five. And that was such a pain having to install each driver yourself and everything else. And the, the user uh, interface was just complete crap. Um, I, I installed uh, uh, Mint. I, I don't know. I can't uh -huh. remember what the hell it's called. Um, I think there is one called Mint. Yeah. The only the only Linux experience that I've had is probably about the same time frame that you were talking about. And it was with Ubuntu, yeah. which I think is a popular build. Yeah, um, and I gotta say, man, it, it worked out. It worked out really well. It installed flawlessly. I went through a couple little tutorials, and it, it's running good. I mean, it's, it's sitting right there. It runs fine. It actually runs a lot better than it does Windows, of course. But mm. I, the whole reason I needed to to install it and get it going is because I needed an iTunes server and a uh, Plex server, and I can't get iTunes to work on it. So I'm gonna have to bail out and go back to Windows. Oh jeez. Yeah. Oh. I know. It's it's like this this ultimate defeatism. And yeah. there's no like you couldn't find any any forums or There there are. It's it's um you basically have to emulate Windows and it, iTunes uh. itself will work fine, you know, through Wine or whatever, through uh th that kind of thing. However, yeah. the part that I need it for is the store. I want to I need to download our iTunes movies purchases so they can be stored locally and not be streamed over the internet each time you're going to watch them. And God, I can't get uh, the store to work, sense. so I can't get the downloads to work. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, I'm sure I could go around it and, you know, make things happen, but that's... I'm I'm, I'm past that. I'm, I'm not in the point in my life where I'm, I'm trying to hack shit together. I want to make it work and make it work well and move on with my life. Says so, the man building a Hackintosh. Uh, hey, uh, you know, I don't know why you're going to be choosy. <laughs> <laughs> well, cheers to you for trying. <laughs> so, um, there's a, there, there's a, speaking of murder, we should go back to this real quick. Ooh. I like murder. You know, my, my introduction to murder was he a cartoon. Like a nice murder. It was a cartoon okay. when I was younger. Yeah, and dude. Okay. So speaking of cartoons about murder. I see what you did there, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Took you long enough. <laughs> God. This, so murder, I think murder is the theme of this episode, unfortunately. <laughs> Thanks, Jackie, for... Um, uh, no. <laughs> did, did you guys... I'm, okay, I know the answer to this already. You guys watched Scooby-Doo when you were kids, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Lived Such it. Such a fun show, right? Yeah. I mean, it is my introduction to crime and pot. Right! So the seventies and eighties version of Scooby Doo was just fantastic. And then throughout the nineties there was like shitty versions and then the movies came out and it was kinda like, eh, okay, I mean it's kinda Scooby Doo. Wait, 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 wait. I gotta disagree, man. I thought the Scooby Doo movies, the live action ones, were amazing. I never saw them. Sure. Okay. Well, <laughs> I did really enjoy the first one. The second one... Um, uh, I'll give you that. The second one fell off a little bit, and the third one did too, but I still thought they were pretty awesome. Wait, wait there's a third one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Like in Okay. laughs> All right, continue. So you were saying Scooby-Doo back in the 70s was awesome. Agreed, go. Right, but I, I haven't been a huge fan of the, the more recent incarnations of Scooby-Doo until just the other day I was flipping through Netflix like everyone does, just... Uh, scrolling, scrolling. I don't know what to watch. I saw a Scooby Doo 
uh, season. And I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm clicking on it. It turned out that it was Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, which is <gasps> only a couple of years dun, old. Dun, dun. And it is, it is so good. It captures everything that was good about the original version of it. Like the whole, you know, we would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for you meddling kids and your dog. You know, that that's all there. All of the the goofy monsters and all the all of that stuff. But is a a modern take on it, and it is so much fun to watch. And it is hilarious, like absolutely hilarious. The all four of us will sit and watch it and just bust up because there there's shit that that goes over Isaac's head because it's too adult of a joke. Nice. And it, awesome. But it's still just as entertaining to probably like four and five year olds. I'm sure. Mm. Like it is so good, so well done. I that I'm, I'm giving another recommendation to people. If you like cartoons, like seriously, Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated. It's on Netflix. Wow. Excellent. I, I love stuff that uh, that has uh, definite jokes for adults tied in that oh. are not too inappropriate. You know. Right. Right. When exactly. when did that when did that really start? Like when did that hit mainstream? Because I remember like back in Animaniacs had tons of adult jokes. Oh yeah. You know, Pink, I, well, Pinky, I think Animaniacs Pinky, probably started it. Peaky in the Brain had some. If you keep going back from there, like um like Rugrats had some, you know, on Nickelodeon. Um, and you, you keep were, you know oh, when, when but when did that theme start? Because I don't remember adult themed. Like offhanded jokes, maybe a little bit in like Pink Panther, like maybe the one offs in Pink Panther, something like that, you know? There's some some kind of mm. some really coy shit in there. But you had to really be paying attention really to it. Hit. I think where it really hit though was with Shrek. Shrek the, uh, the movies? Oh. The, yeah, Shrek the movie. Because that that movie is chock full of a Puff the Magic Dragon? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> other than the title of the film. <laughs> no. Oh my god, that was a Cannabis uh, Mystery Wonderland. That, uh, <laughs> that know, cartoon. I, I honestly I couldn't even say. I watched that when I was. There was a, there was a whole I, bunch of there was a whole bunch of cartoons in the in the sixties that were definitely like LSD influenced and I mean you could even kind of say Alice in Wonderland. Um, uh, oh, you know yeah. I, that was a big thing back in the sixties at least, and then it kind of everything got kind of got scrubbed down in the eighties. Um, you know, they, right, because, they were... because we had He Man. I mean, who needed uh, adult jokes and and themes with He Man, right? <laughs> yeah, well, like... in the in the eighties though, that's when the the uh, parents television council, I think, is what it's called, yes. came out. Basically, censored everything. Uh, so like He Man, like all of the He Man characters had swords, but not once ever, ever, ever did a character use a sword. Ah, uh, fuck you, Tipper Gore. Yeah, there was. Yeah. No I'm violence. just gonna say. There was no violence in He Man. No, there wasn't. And there's a lot of cartoons that are like that. There's absolutely no violence ever. And it, it blows. <laughs> like, did you ever see anyone die on G.I. Joe? No, they Man, always they, got they, out. Yeah, they shot. Did every... I ever see G.I. Joe? Yeah, yeah, who the hell's Joe? Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm a girl, so it's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to see the G.I.'s Joe. That's what she wanted. <laughs> Oh, oh. Not that age. <laughs> Today, right. yeah, sure. Yeah. I see <laughs> Show me, Joe. Uh, speaking of oh, things yeah, we, no. we like to see, we have uh, this. Uh, Jackie, you've got Tim Urban, Inside the Mind of a Master Procrastinator. Tell us about that. Well, because I procrastinated getting ready for the show... Which is why I had all the audio trouble up front. Um, I, uh, I, I actually I picked one that I thought I could tie in to other things that I was posting for the show to kind of have a little theme of murder and procrastination. And I was going to tie that into the fact that I was not prepared for a hurricane when I actually teach government agencies on how to be prepared for emergencies. <clears throat> and so I don't I don't practice what I preach. But anyways, this Tim, <laughs> Tim Urban uh, TED Talks was funny. I uh, the guy talked about you know how he would write a paper in college and wait until the last minute, and uh, you know I was like uh, there, he, he, there was absolutely nothing in it that I guess I posted this not because I liked it. There was nothing in it I, that a true lifelong procrastinator doesn't already know, <laughs> and you know it's the same with a lot of these kind of motivational speeches that 
you know, you can tell me this and I over and over. And I, the only benefit I see from listening to them is that maybe if it's drilled in your head enough, you'll follow it. But no, I know all of this stuff. I know what I know I'm supposed to be doing. doesn't mean I'm going to do it. I think it's one of those things with, with uh, and we've talked about this before, Kent, with motivational speakers and things like that. It's not a matter of, you know, whether it's, it's self-motivation or relationship books or business books. It's not a matter of telling you things you didn't know. It's a matter of representing the information in a way that clicks with you. And then that's why you've got to read and, and, and experience so many of these uh, uh, self-help projects from other people. Because 99% of them aren't going to speak to you in your particular situation and your view on that situation. But that one that does can literally change your viewpoint and you can walk away, I don't want to say a better person, but a, a changed person. Uh, uh, a person with a changed outlook on, on something. Yeah. 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 No, that's, that's absolutely true because there's, there's been a lot of speakers that I've, I've listened to on, well, lots, lots of different subjects, but they'll be saying the exact same thing, but th the presentation of it from one person will stick with me where all the other ones I just kind of dismiss for whatever reason. Yep. Exactly. Um, now I believe all of us, uh, no, it's not a TED Talk. I kind of skipped out on TED Talks because I wanted to listen to this next subject. I listened to it twice, actually. Um, oh. And uh, I even provided feedback, like total total win, right? Andrew <laughs> Main, The Darker Path. Now, Andrew Main is a member of Diamond Club, uh, so it's not like a, a far reach from, from, you know, it's not so far outside of our circle. But The Darker Path came out – well, I mean, Kent, you, you would actually know more about how it came out than, than I would. You, you were more uh, a little more involved in it. Okay, so <clears> – excuse me. So Andrew Main hosts a Diamond Club podcast with Brian Brushwood and Justin Robert Young. And sometimes Bryce Castillo will fill in. And a couple of weeks back – it's probably going on a month ago now uh, – Brian Brushwood was not able to sit in on this show. So it was Justin and Bryce, I believe, were the guests on it. And Andrew decided about halfway through the show to basically turn turn the episode into almost like a choose-your-own-adventure type of thing. Because he presented a scenario to his guests and made them make choices and then he was basically playing the role of a, of a DM, like a, like a dungeon master from Dungeons and Dragons and explaining the scenario. And uh, it turned out to be like super entertaining and just a fun thing for them to do. So Andrew got the great idea to spin it off into its own podcast. And he released his first beta, like his test run, uh, just a couple of days ago. And Amos, this is what you were referring to that you provided a lot of feedback and actually listened to a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, Jackie, uh, did you listen? To, I'm, I'm sure you did, right? I, I, again, I procrastinated <laughs> to prepare for the show. <laughs> and no, um, actually, I was in the live recording of Weird Things when they did this. And uh, uh, so my memory of it is a little vague, but I do remember Bryce doing a damn good job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Bryce now, is always entertaining. No, yeah. th this is a this is one of those things that no, it's not it's not a TED talk. It's not an educational thing. But I, I felt Actually, that. Oh, and the other thing is when you had that listed, my first reaction was, well, of course, Andrew Maine is doing a TED talks. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it, it wouldn't surprise me actually at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, uh, Sorry. it 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 was a creative venture, and I think this the section that we're doing with TED talks isn't just about TED talks. It's about bringing creativity and understanding and sharing ideas and the, you know the, the whole thing behind the TED Talks and uh, I really felt this fit and I, th I thought it was pretty awesome it reminded me of working detasseling in, in uh, Indiana where we didn't have dice we didn't have character sheets we just had a DM and we had three people on either side of them and we we're all just going along and, and the DM would come up with an adventure and it was all a spoken word adventure no dice rolling or anything else but we just played D&D &D working in the cornfield and it really had that feel to it. Really enjoyed it. I'm really excited to see where it goes. And I think it's exciting that, that Andrew Main intends to get a lot of fan interaction and involvement. And uh, I'm always a fan of that. 
because I'm a fan. I'm a fan of fans. I'm a fan of fan done. things. <laughs> so, um, any any uh, last inputs on on that kind of stuff? Um, I I encourage people to check it out. It's it's definitely going to be a fun thing. I only got about halfway through it before you know life distracted me and I didn't do it. Um, but no, it's it's super cool. He's adding in uh, like sound effects, yeah. uh, like mood music, things like that. Yeah. Yes, and I did catch some it, of that. That was yeah. really nice. Yeah, just cre- kind of creating the atmosphere and just making it fun. And um, yeah, just I, I almost forgot to mention at the end of it, he goes on this little anthropology trip and talks about like the or, where he got the idea from the story from. And how it, it it's a, a how what it means to our current life, like to us right now and in, in the real world, and how it how it can relate to that. And I thought that that alone was the first time I listened to it. Is a little little standoffish with it. The second time it fit just perfectly. It was like yes, this is exactly where this should end up and 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 finally be. So I thought it was pretty exciting. Hmm. Um, cool. So uh, so today was a big Apple announcement. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna forward this right now. I'm looking at you, all the fans out there that say we talk about Apple shit too much. We are gonna cut this down to one idea each. So, if you okay. had to wrap up the Apple announcement in one idea, that's not one sentence, just one idea. Kent, what would your one idea be? Um. Well, if I have to use one word, no, 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 not one word, just one idea. No, I know, but this is this is I'm leading into it. So, if I was to use one word, though, I would have to make it a hashtag so that I can squeeze multiple words in together, and it would be (laughs) iPhone headphone jack gate. Oh Jesus! People are pissed off about (laughs) the headphone jack going away. Uh. I personally almost never use it, and I really don't give two shits. Uh, I use it all the time, and <clears throat> I, I could easily see myself angry about this. Like, oh, my God, they're taking away my headphone jack. How dare they? Blah, 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 blah. But honestly, something has to come along. Someone has to come along to push us towards a new standard. Right, and, right. And yeah, yeah, yeah it, it may not work out. I mean, every chance that, that uh, the Apple is taking, you know, the getting rid of the floppy drives, getting rid of the optical drives, um, all these things, there's a chance that it wouldn't work. But it's always pushed us just even that little bit towards something better. And I mean, you, you could debate that on the optical drives or not, but whatever. Um, I'm all for it. I think it's awesome. Jackie, your thoughts? Um, I, I kind of agree. I, I, at first I was kind of like, oh God, I, you know, I just, I absolutely hate when devices change, um, so that you can't, things are not compatible, uh, mostly because I travel a lot and I'm going to lose my headphones. I'm not going to be able to connect. However, I absolutely agree with you that it's going to happen sometime, you know? So, um, I'm sorry uh, white people, rich, uh, first world problems, but yeah, you're going to probably have to go out and buy a new headset if you've got the new iPhone, um, or, or the wireless headset. Um, but if I were to, to describe it in one, the, the Apple review and, uh, um, in one, um, statement is, that's really good that you did that because I was only able to get up to the watches and then I couldn't hear the rest of it because I had been moving all day. <laughs> um, so the watches I'm excited about because they you can swim with them. Hmm. That's it. I'm, I love swimming. I'm, in, in a quick response to that, I've been showering and swimming with my watch for, I don't know, since I had it a year ago or whatever and haven't had a single problem with it. However, oh, it's nice for them to increase the... The waterproofing enough to where I'm not nervous about it anymore. And um, apparently, it can track your swimming, like right. as far as laps. The, the added, added GPS. Yeah. So you know, uh, we'll see. Yeah. But um, I, I that's all I that's all I have to say about it. I really don't care about it one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna have to say that I'm I'm kind of the same with the watch. I I'm not a watch wearer myself, so it's you know whatever. But I am happy to see more independence going to the watch. 
so that it's not as tethered to the phone. I, th I think that's a good thing. So adding the GPS and all that is is a that's a huge plus for it. Um, I'm gonna it, it, to sum it up in w in, in one idea. I am going to go with um, excitedly iterative. There's nothing revolutionary. There's nothing major on on the you know on the docket. Nothing holy shit. But all the changes that they made, there was nothing that I saw that was overly superfluous. Like everything, like adding the second camera to the iPhone Seven Plus, it, it's awesome. That that just it fits. It sounds like that that's something that, that just natural. Um, next progression of that of that product all the changes to the apple watch yes this is okay now you're this is a fully fleshed out product now you've added the few things and you you fancied it up a little bit nothing was like holy shit but nothing disappointed either i, I wasn't sitting there going oh man like oh they didn't go far enough on this it is just yeah. like everything was and i don't i don't want to say expectedly iterative either like excitedly iterative. Like I'm, I'm happy to see it. I'm not gonna rush <laughs> out and buy the new shit. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy to see the, the direction they're going. But I, I didn't mean to Did go out and buy the 6s plus either. Uh, I had to get it because my, my, my last phone was basically fucked up. So, you know. Yeah. Jackie? Can I add one more thing? Oh, of course. The the Pokemon Go uh, is kind of cool. And uh, the, I, I saw I did see the Mario um, presentation. Yes. Yeah, and, and I kind of thought, OK, so you could play a game that we could all play when we were kids <laughs> on your phone. So, so the, like the, if I can make Mario make me a pizza and bring it to me, then I might be more impressed. I'm I, I was happy about the Mario thing, not because of the game itself, but it opens. It's it's Nintendo officially opening the way to having Nintendo uh, uh, licenses on yeah. mobile platforms. When they, yep. when they break out F zero on my fucking phone, I'm gonna go <laughs> nuts. I'm gonna go nuts. When I get Zelda on my iPad, we're done. Like I'm not gonna be able to, I'm not gonna be here that <laughs> done. weekend. So like I'm I'm not gonna be on the show that week. You know what I mean? Like that's gonna be the thing. No more show. <laughs> so so the, yeah the the uh, the Mario thing wasn't wasn't so exciting in and of itself, but what I, it could I, lead to is. Really it could lead to him making me a nice pizza. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a pizza. So, yeah, so, some somebody somebody's hungry. Um, hey, uh, let's take a quick break, real quick, to talk about geekandgamergear.com. Kent, where would you go if you needed to buy a retro controller for a new system? That's easy, man. And you already gave it away. It's geekandgamergear.com. That's geek, the letter N. Gamergear.com. Now, why, why, why would we, uh, why would we be pimping that? Why would, why would, I mean, you know, well, are, 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 they, are they, are they paying us a bunch of money? No. Are they, uh, are they giving us free shit? Nope. Okay. Um, why would we be, uh, pimping that site then? Well, first of all, they have all kinds of really cool, geeky, nerdy shit on there. A lot of it is very retro. And the other reason is that they're giving us teeny tiny bit of money for sales. Uh, um, I, I, I was going to go with uh, we can help our viewers get ten percent off by using the the, the coupon code Ritual Misery. But, that's what you know, I was going to. That's yeah. what I was leading into. That that <laughs> our our fans <laughs> will save more money than what we make on it. Oh, so definitely. You save ten bucks on a thing, we might get ten cents or something. So. Yeah, yeah, that's essentially how it works. But yeah, geekandgamergear.com. Cruise on by there. Uh, they got all kinds of cool stuff. New stuff, old stuff, retro stuff, stuff you wouldn't find anywhere else. It's actually really cool. Um, I can't say that I haven't bought stuff there myself. Um, so cruise awesome. on by there and do that. And uh, use the code Ritual Misery on uh, checkout and help us out, help you out. You get 10%. We get a penny or two. And uh, helps us makes this show better. So. Yep. Um, I got to tell you. I got to tell you, I've been, Kent, we were in, you were in Florida. I was in South Carolina. Yep. That was like two decades ago, dude. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't know why you'd be calling us out on shit though. Calling yourself, <laughs> call, calling yourself old and stuff, man. I, I don't get it. Um, yeah. I wasn't even alive two decades ago. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> 
<laughs> got our teeny <laughs> bop. Don't laugh so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I just so so. Here's the thing. Kent last week celebrated his first year as a civilian after serving 20 years in the military. Yeah, I've been in for 21 years and, and a little bit of change. There are people coming in right now that or the people in right now that were born after I joined that can legally drink. Oh, yeah, good point. Like that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a little bit odd. It's it really really is. Um, kids these days. Seriously, uh-huh. seriously. <laughs> Uh, but of, of all the of all the things, um, ba- even back that far, even back all those years ago, we were having a discussion about um, EULAs, end user license agreements, and right. how absolutely fucking impossible they are to read. Yeah, because I mean, you could read the whole thing, but my God, it will take you twenty minutes on a short one. Yeah, right, right. For for some shareware shit. Right, right. Um, so Patreon, uh, your friend and mine, just changed yep. their terms of service to be readable by humans. I read that. <laughs> did did, yes. uh, did did you actually read the new terms of service? Yeah, I saw the email message and I looked at it uh, yeah. because I was thinking of starting one and uh, or have been thinking of starting one since 2014. <laughs> yeah. And uh, um, and 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 I I was yeah it was pretty easy to get through and that was very surprising. Yeah, I I I wish this is like such this is more revolutionary to me than the, anything at the Apple announcement. Um, <laughs> I I totally agree. Like, why can't we? Let's. I understand there are people out there who make a living wording shit in just the specific way required by a law. Why can't we just have the normal ease? Write some shit in English to where I can understand it, and it doesn't take me more than one episode on the shitter. Like there is, right. there, there's no legal contract that I ever want to sign that should take longer than a turd. Well, and here's here's the thing too, though, they still have the long version. Right there, there's the short version, the human readable version that is just fantastic, and everyone should read because it takes thirty seconds to read through it. Well, okay, maybe a minute. And then they've got the full legalese version, the the no kidding binding version. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, but I'm my my question about it though is that who went through it and like verified? Like, was did they have to hire a like a third lawyer or something, a third party, to come in and say that okay, this is accurate? To oh, they've got plenty of money. They've got plenty of attorneys. Yeah, <laughs> they they those attorneys worked on that common language that layman term right. language for you know uh, yeah to make couple sure days with nothing in it would hold like make chinese life. takeout and yeah i mean no they, they <laughs> like yeah i that, that's something that anybody really could do um absolutely i you, mean a, a bit a bit of were you saying that they should be careful because if it's too general then I, they can get I, in trouble. I, I, honestly, so this is this is my monkey brain talking here, okay? The simple, <laughs> hey, just give it to me straight, the easiest easiest form that I can digest in my in, in the the you know the neurons that are still working up here. All right. <laughs> Even if, if you give me something that is that is human readable, as opposed to fucking machine language, right? If you give me mm-hmm. something that is human readable, and there's more detail than that, or there are extra details. I don't care. You've given me the meat and potatoes. You give me the the eighty percent solution. If if I'm if I'm that nuanced to where I'm gonna hold something, you know what? There's the legal version right over here. It's right there. You can go fucking get into legalese all you want. Here is the re- the uh, the read the human readable version that is just off with you. Gives you the lowdown and moves on with your life. I, and I, I don't understand why don't, why we don't have more of this all the time. Yeah, and I, I don't think Patreon is the first company to do this. I th- I think I have seen something like this before. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. This needs to be prevalent. Every company should do exactly this. There's no reason not to. Yep. Jackie, what do you guys say? Uh, you got a, you got maybe a little more experience in the in this area of this foray than we do. Um, I was checking out to see if the screen was freezing. <laughs> um, Thanks, Cabo, for the live feedback. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. thank you. 
Yes, and also, hi, David Parker. Um, uh, I miss you. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, no, I, I, I actually, I, well, I mean, just to summarize the Patreon thing, since I'm, I'm not really sure where your question was directed, is uh, that I, can, I, I think it was beautiful. I think it was great. I got through it quickly. Um, I don't think that there was anything... I mean, there was one section in particular that I was concerned about uh, as far as becoming a paid, a creator that I read into more detail, but the rest, I just read the general overview and I yep. love that they had that in there. So yep. it, it, it worked fine. I think, I think that they're, they covered all their bases, you know? Yep. Hell yeah. Let's make that mandatory for everybody. And, and honestly, it's going to be up to you because you are the one selecting. I click yes to agree. I agree to these terms that if you don't go back and read that extra material, mm -hmm. um, Right. And it, you know, then it's, <laughs> it, it's on you. Um, I don't, I don't think that there's ever going to be a case where somebody gets in trouble and they can say, well, I just read the general statement um, and I didn't read into the details. And, you know, so I think they've covered everything, but I, I, I thought it was great. I wish everyone yeah. would do that. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so we, uh, we, 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 uh, uh... I don't even know where to go for this. Like, uh, uh, there's so many things that I want to say right this second. First of all, <laughs> months ago, I mentioned that I was working on a secret project. And we kind of stopped mentioning it because it kind of stalled out. Just too many things going on over the summer. I got Oh, yeah. The, your move and uh, uh, life change. Yeah. Like, just bad summer all around. Um, yeah. I, I got confirmation today that we're moving forward with it. It's going to be awesome details hopefully next week so stay tuned for that i know i just pulled the johnson don't care um we uh so, go ahead i was just gonna say since since you teased next week should we go ahead and and um since we're gonna tease should we actually give a reveal like some sort of a payoff so people can look forward to next week yes uh sure <laughs> sure. Uh, uh, what 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 could we possibly have going on next week that that people would want to I don't know catch up and view? I mean I don't, I don't like why. You know I well I've got one concern one concern before I make the announcement. Okay. I've got one concern. I I think we might have to invest in some infrared cameras maybe because um, I don't know how well we're going to be able to see our guest on a regular oh, camera. Oh yeah, that that's uh that's that might be that might be a thing. So J Jackie, how, would infrared do you think work for someone that's invisible? Like would you be able to see an invisible person on infrared? Uh no, but you could probably use a puppet. Mm. <laughs> mm. Interesting. That if if that if if someone was invisible, they could certainly put a sock over their hand. What about what about an invisible wife? She has several of my puppets. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to ask her about that. Bonnie Brushwood is going to be our ne our next guest. Oh yeah. wait, I have a Bonnie a, I have a Bonnie puppet, but I I didn't send it to her, but I could send it to her. <laughs> <laughs> Leave, leave it to this show to remind you of things uh, that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that thing I didn't do. Uh, uh, but, yeah, we're really looking forward to that. Uh, Bonnie, yay! To Bonnie for quite some time about the possibility of coming on, and it's going to happen next week. So really looking forward to that. That's going to be what, awesome. What? We, uh, that, that's, actually, that's actually been in the works for how long, Kent? Uh, South by oh. South by two A years year ago? A year ago? Yeah. Uh, well, that's when it kind of... That's when the seed was planted originally, I think. Um, yeah. But yeah, serious talks about it. Probably a couple of months, maybe. Yeah. That, yeah, something. I don't know. So, uh, but it's happening. So, awesome. So, tune in next week for that. Okay. That's and awesome. uh, this is all. This is all part. Uh, we we had uh, uh, a couple guests on already. Cabo, who's in the chat room right now, he was on. We had Tay Allen on. Those episodes were absolute garbage, not because of the content, but because of the presentation. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because, because of the guests. Yeah. <laughs> because, because the host can't get his goddamn audio we'll shit figured out. We'll never have those assholes on ever again. <laughs> never. Cabo, you're never coming back. What are you doing in a couple of these Cabo? Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, can, so, can you so, be on next so, uh, October? <laughs> Tell us. 
<laughs> so, 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 what are you, what are you, what are you doing on uh, like the second week of November? Um, so, there's <laughs> this is all part of our countdown to our episode, our one hundredth episode. Um, it's gonna be no, awesome. Don't go, Cabo. <laughs> <laughs> <He's Go. laughs> oh, no, I was there for that show, and I thought it was great. Oh man, yeah. I, I yeah, the audio was the only 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 yeah, problem. Yeah, the it. audio was yeah. Yeah, and um, honestly, I think I think the majority of that show was pretty good. There was just there were some pretty terrible audio moments. Uh, Gremlins picked and cho- chose their moments, I think, during yeah. that. <laughs> and and speaking of that episode, and, and since we mentioned Patreon, um, our our patrons have an exclusive version of that episode that is the entire episode, because uh, audio problems and all. Um, we okay. actually cut that one a little bit short because audio problems in the beginning were so rough. But if you're into it and you really want to hear Cabo and hear the laughs that we had previous to to where the, 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 the edits came in, that's on uh, that's on our Patreon. So cruise on over there and uh, it, it 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 takes what a penny? Come on, so um, dudes, I didn't know you had a Patreon. Yeah, of course we do. Where and you haven't mentioned it. Where can people find the Patreon? Rich, uh, that'd be uh, Patreon.com/slash Ritual Misery. Ritual misery. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Yep. yep, yep Going yep. there today. Oh, we get a, we get like we get like we get like five people or three people or I don't know I don't know how you count that but uh, we got like we got like or, we got like big money's coming in we got like seventeen dollars <laughs> coming in it's amazing. Or I'm going tomorrow when my <laughs> check clears. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just moved. There, there is that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be there. So, uh, so as part of as part of it, um, we've invited some some great guests to come in for episode uh, 98, 99, 100. Um, 96 and ninety seven are still a little sketchy. Uh, we're, we haven't. Uh, we're we're kind of we we hit a little little patch right there. Like we we had really big ideas and we we're just we're. Let's just be honest. We're we're just we're we're not fulfilling our our our, our desires with it. So what what we decided to do instead, we thought, you know what? There are a lot of people in chat room. So we'll have Jackie Hearn on. <laughs> no, no, no. That one was planned. You yeah, um, you were planned from the beginning. You were yeah. you were oh, no, come on. Uh, from in, in so chance. I could work out the audio issues before. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, we would have had you on episode ninety if that was the case. Um, You're I think ne- I was on episode ninety. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a bit. <laughs> no, uh, uh, Ken. I mean, in all honesty, man, uh, what, Tay Allen was our first. Like, no shit, we're ramping up to uh, to episode one hundred, and then we had Cabo on the following week, and. Um, jury actually, fact. it was the other way around. It was Cabo, then Tay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, then we had Jury Facts. That's uh, right. And now we Richard got Richard last week. Yep. Which was an awesome show. Yep. Yep. Uh, this week we had the wonderful Jackie Hearn. Yep. And, and next week, week say, we already announced is Bonnie Brushwood. And then the week after that. The week after, I think we're going to take a bye week, actually. Yeah. The week after Bonnie's show. Um, stuff going on. I've got a business trip coming up that's right. going to take me away. Um, then, but the following week, we want to have a diamond club party. Yeah. Everyone. So, like, everybody. Like, everybody get in here. Everybody. If you throw the diamonds, you're invited. We are going to pose an email and send it out to just about all of the diamond clubbers that we can think of. Um, but we are going to put the open invite out there. We might even do some diamond time with that. You think? Yeah, yeah we'll probably throw that in there. Probably. Yeah. That's the best um, it's going to be a good time. Details to come. That's three weeks from today. Uh, uh, sure. So we've got some planning. We've got some planning time to yep. to get it all put out there. But but uh, yeah, yep. expect it soon. Uh, our chat participants in particular, we would love to see you there. Uh, oh, yeah. Past guests, Jackie. We would love to see you there. Yeah, just don't have me on, because then you'll have actual people in chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, s- said from another uh, Diamond Club B teamer. Speaking of which, if you put stuff out on DiamondClub.tv and you are not one of the main shows and you want to join our little uh, our little chat group and uh, the Slack, just hop on in, and we- we're going to try to throw some ideas in there. Get uh, you know the rising tide lifts all ships so good and uh, just let me know shoot, shoot us an email podcast at ritualmisery.com and we will get you added to that 
and we'll see what we can do as far as a corroboration and collaboration and uh, making sure our stories match up. Yeah, <laughs> so here, Jackie, uh, we started a new bit last show, and we're still tweaking it. We're still uh, working out the bugs, and we've been running that that same bit this episode uh, in a slightly different fashion, actually quite a different fashion. Yeah, yeah, totally different. So from the beginning of the episode, we have had a list of words that we needed to harvest from the show, uh, whether it was themes or funny things that were said or whatever, single words uh, that we have been throwing into a document. And we have fulfilled most of the blanks that we were trying to fill, but we've got just a couple that we haven't filled. And what we're going to do to fill those blanks is ask you questions, but we need one word answers in the first thing that comes to your mind. Are you down with that? So like a speed round. Okay. All right. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Uh, let me take another little sip of my little sink. <laughs> <laughs> We've actually only what? How many do we have? We've only we got, got a couple that we, we got, need to we fill, got, right? We got two. We got two. So the first one, uh, just two. Yep. Yeah, just two. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, actually yeah, we did yeah. a lot better than we thought we were gonna do. So, uh, what is the first thing you reach for when you wake up in the morning? Cat. Your cat. Cat. Okay. All right. Because he's usually sleeping on top of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And when you are at dinner. Regardless of what the dinner situation is, when you are at, when you are at dinner, what is the most important thing to have with you? Salt. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not wine, 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 <laughs> wine. Wait. Final, wine. An- final answer is wine. Yes, <laughs> wine. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, Jackie. Uh, where can people find more of the amazing Jackie? Is Hurd? that it? I don't get to hear the results. Oh, that, that, oh no, that's gonna come you at would... the end. We got, okay, we, we right, gotta make okay. sure people know about you <laughs> and where to get more of you before we give off the big payoff. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, well, I would encourage everyone to please, please subscribe to my YouTube. I'm begging you. Um, I will give you my firstborn child. Ugh. Um, yeah. If you could, if you subscribe, said, oh. you can prove it. Um, uh, and you can go to youtube.com. I think it's just slash c slash Jackie Hearn. Um, or users slash c slash Jackie Hearn. I can't well, you just go search for Jackie Hearn on YouTube. If you can't find it, go to jackiehearn.com and you can just follow me on Twitter at Jackie Hearn 81 to find out about my shenanigans. It, it'll, it'll be in the show notes things. Like, and like, nobody's going to look at that. They're gonna uh, be like, God. Am I the only one? Am I the only one that actually looks at show notes when I listen to a podcast? Like I no. read, I read the show notes for almost every podcast I listen to. I do because I tend to make sock puppet videos out of podcasts <laughs> that I like. <laughs> so, um, by the way, yeah, and that's the other thing is that I, I'm going to do some really good videos this time, not not crappy videos. So please subscribe to them. I promise you, I won't put my uh, fan cast up on there so you won't be interrupted with Jackie Hearn recorded a fan cast that you don't care about. It's going to be sock puppet videos that might make you laugh. So please check it out. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. And if you haven't seen Jackie Hearn sock puppets uh, show up somewhere. They're right then, behind me. Then Yeah. Then you are, you are obviously not a uh, diamond club DVT because that's, that's pretty much where, where life is at. Um, hey, Ken, where can people find more of you, man? The best place is Twitter, at RM underscore Del Noche. I'm always doing something crazy off the wall, whatever, trying to make people laugh or point out something that was cool. Uh, check me out there. If you're a beer guy like me, go to ratebeer.com and check out username Del Noche and see my over 500 reviews. Hey, uh, did you have a review for this one right here? Because uh, I got to say, I didn't like it when I started drinking it, this Alaskan white. Um, but towards the end, it, it kind of grew on me. It wasn't bad. I've rated some Alaskans, but I don't think it was Alaskan white. Mm. Uh, yeah. How, how uh, just about, go to about, beer.com, look up username Del Noche, and you find out. How about this one? <laughs> Did you uh, Have you ever rated the uh, the Who Dat Do That? Have you ever uh, uh, rated that uh, beer? Pushed it up. Uh, push, uh, yeah. 
Uh, loser. Um, so you can find me at Ethan Kane on the Twitter. You can follow the show at Ritual Misery and uh, find all of the things that we do at RitualMisery.com. You can submit ideas, RitualMisery.reddit.com. We'd love to see more ideas in there. That's a, it's such an amazing platform. We really need more interaction there. And, of course, you can email us, podcast at RitualMisery.com. And if you if you feel like calling, leaving a vo- leaving us a voicemail, we will play it live on air because that's what we do. Just call uh eight six seven or uh, five six seven six nine TRMPC. That's five six seven six nine eight seven six seven two. Can 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 you repeat that number again, <laughs> please? It's five six seven six nine eight seven six seven two. All right. Five hey. six seven six nine eight seven six seven two. Yes. That sounds like too many numbers. Is that correct? <laughs> oh, I see. You you took the break and okay. Yeah, I, I I I broke it weird. Okay. Uh, see, you need to explain that to the people. Five six seven six nine eight <laughs> seven six seven two. Does it spell something funny? Uh well five six seven sixty nine T R M P C the Ritual Misery Podcast. Oh, so 69. Yeah. The yeah. Art. yeah. <laughs> see, see? Okay. And then, no, uh, no, no. I'm down. That's good. So, um, yeah. And it's actually like an Austin uh, Austin area code, I think. Oh, sweet. Is where it comes in at. So. Is it really? I didn't it, realize that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Nice. Uh, okay. So, are we gonna, how, how are we going to do that? Are we going to, am I going to read this or am you, are you going to read I, it? I read, how, I read it last week. Why don't you read it this week? Okay, so Jackie, this is the story you helped Papa us. Pa- points out that uh, that time of the month used to do a really good ad lib show, so it's nice to see it coming back on your show. <laughs> even even though we stole still in the beta, so that's fine. Uh, well, then, <laughs> yeah, it's tit for tat. Unknowing then. though, unknowing though. Yeah, no, no, whatever. It, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. Of course. <laughs> All right. So here's the story. Here's the story of your episode. This is really an invisible horror film because the heroine is a little 10-year-old girl played by Hermine Reynolds, who is the granddaughter of the famous old-time cat Andrew Reynolds. In this picture, she can start fires by sending complicated vibrations out of the iterative parts of her little brain. She sets houses on fire and automobiles and gremlins and burns down several details sure how much sense that part made but the men (laughs) then men from the defense department come and want to use her as a secret military wine (laughs) they tell her if she helps them they will give her a new monkey to play with yay (laughs) But, (laughs) but, but she is too busy charging down tallahassee and french frying snoop dogg it all comes to an end when she gives up starting fires and decides to grow up to become a cop. <laughs> now, bonus yeah. points, Jackie. <laughs> bonus points if you can if you can name that movie. <laughs> I wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I, I was like People like really to do our show. So no, it, it... no, no, no. I wasn't really grasping the story. I was just kind of listening to where the funny this words. Is, this, and, you know. this is this is where the uh, the problems come in with our fire, with our... fire starter. Yes, yes. Okay, very okay. good. <laughs> oh, okay, man. all right. So that was the amazing Jackie Hearn. Of course, you can find uh, more of this at ritualmisery.com. Hey, uh, real quick, uh, thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Um, lots of, pod- lots of podcasts use you and, or use your music and it's, it's awesome. So, um, for Kent, for Jackie, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Jackie, were you doing the Beverly Hillbillies? <laughs> I, was I, was doing, I was doing the granny thing. <laughs> I was just doing a crazy, insane woman.